In this video series, we've been covering how to make a first person shooter game. Please visit the link below if you have not seen part one of this series. In that one, we covered level creation, textures, and inserting players and enemies into a game. In this video, I'm going to cover lighting, customized textures, health triggers, level changes, and distributing your game. And due to the popularity of the first video, I've decided to add another video to the series where I cover creating your own characters, adding weapons, and customizing the heads up display. For extra hints, links, and discussions, please visit the forum topic at the URL below. Let's begin by adding our own custom textures. Before opening up the game editor, open up Microsoft Paint. Within Paint, you can open up an image that you want to use as your texture, or you can create your own. But in order for this to work with the game, you'll need to resize it to a power of 2, such as 64x64, 128x128, 256 by 256 and so on. Then when you save it, save it as a 256 color bitmap to your desktop. Next we need to add this to our game's texture file. So click on Start, Programs, Reality Factory, Tools, RF Texture Packer. Then go to File and Open to open up the default texture file which should be found in your Program Files Reality Factory Media Levels folder. Then just drag your newly created texture file onto the texture packer and it should appear in the list. So now go to File and Save and that should be it. Then just open up your RF editor and open up your saved game. If you look under the texture tab, you should now see your new texture file. So now you can add it to an object as I covered in the last video. Next let's start adding some lights. Under the templates tab and entities, choose light. Then click on where you want to place it in the game and hit enter. Generally you want it to be in the center of the room on the ceiling as if it were a chandelier. Then click on the Modify Brushes button and select the light. Now on the right side you should see the light's properties. You can double click on the color value and change it to whatever color you want and then click OK. Then under the light option you can change the light's intensity. If you have a large room then you might want to change it to somewhere around 1000. Now if you render the game you can see the new lights and you can adjust them as necessary. To add a health attribute to the game, you want to click on the template tab and under entities choose attribute. Click on where you want to place it in the game and hit enter. Then click on the modify brushes button and select the attribute to bring up the properties for it. Under the attribute name you want to type health and under the attribute amount you can set it to however much you want to increase the health by. If you want to use an actor file to represent this object, you can type that into the SZ actor name location. I've downloaded the medkit actor file from the website below where you can find tons of free actor files to use in your game. But if you just want to test it out you can type in virgil.act and then render the game and after you've lost some health you should be able to run into this object and it will increase your health. To create an exit door, create a brush and shape it to the size of a door and place it where you want in the game. Then click on Models, select your door, and click on Add Model, and then enter in a name for it. Now to make it exit or change to a different level, you need to select the Templates tab and under Entities choose Change Level. Click to place it next to the door and hit Enter. Now click on the Modify Brush button and select the Change Level entity that we just created to bring up its properties. Change the model name to the name of the door model that we created and change SZ new level to the name of the BSP file for the next level. You can find the names of level files in the program files reality factory media levels folder. If you want to exit the game just leave it blank. Now run the game and test it out. Once you have the game ready to play now you can distribute it to your friends. After you've closed out of the editor, you can go to your computer, local disk C, program files and copy the Reality Factory folder to your desktop. Now you want to open up the folder and go to the install directory, right click on character.ini and select edit. Change the start level for each of the characters listed to the name of the game that you've just created. If you're not sure what the name of your game is, you can find a list of all the game levels in the media and levels directory within this Reality Factory folder. The levels end in .bsp. 
When you're through, save the file and go back to the Reality Factory folder and double click on realityfactory.exe to launch your game. Now you can just zip up this entire folder and send it to friends to play. There are a lot of tips and tricks that I haven't been able to cover in this video, but I will post many of them in my forum, so feel free to visit if you're interested in learning more. Be sure to check out Tinkernut.com on Facebook and Twitter. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to Tinkernut.com.